Brainford. Welcome back to the Big 550 KTRS. Hey, McGraw, good morning. All right, so overnight, uh, your group uh, released a statement. The news uh, this morning is about the alderman and the new plan to the alderman and to, to the board. We'll get to that. But this statement overnight, I'll read some of it. It says, thanks, for our, uh, thanks to our uh, uh, co- collaboration with Governor Greitens and his staff over the past two weeks, SCSTL has found a path forward with the state of Missouri that will advance our goal of bringing Major League Soccer to a new multi-use stadium in downtown St. Louis. Is there a thawing out of the governor's office? What's going on? Yeah, so the ownership group has been meeting with Governor Greitens since he issued his uh, statement back in December. Now, just so everybody could remember, uh, the previous governor, Governor Nixon, had supported uh, uh, soccer uh, in the new multipurpose stadium and was going to uh, uh, put in uh, $40 million in state tax credits through an organization called the Missouri Finance Development Board. The day before the meeting, Governor Greitens put out a statement saying that's a really bad idea and everybody knows what he says. The ownership group could have passed the tax credits the next right. day, but they chose because of that. They don't want the incoming governor to be against their stadium. They pulled that off the table and immediately started talking to Governor Greitens. And I'm not part of that or privy to those discussions, but uh, the ownership group and the city both have said that for this uh, project to move forward, the state has to be involved. So everybody should be encouraged based on that statement that they must be having a breakthrough with Governor Greitens enough that they're ready to move forward. As far as what the governor is going to agree on, uh, I'm going to leave it to the governor to make his own news and to talk about what the state is willing to do and what it's not willing to do. But obviously he has found a way uh, to move this forward for the state in a way that is fiscally responsible for the state and consistent with the principles he's talked about over the last few weeks. All right, we'll leave that for a second. Now let's go to the news, what the Board of Aldermen is going to be taking up here because uh, the group is asking for $20 million less. What's going on here? So, uh, the, the yes, uh, in October when MLS said, hey, we're going to pick uh, two teams in uh, April and we really like St. Louis, uh, the group said we need eighty million out of the out of the city, and since that time, the city's been like, "That's a lot of money. We're not sure it's worth eighty million." There've been a lot of discussions, and what it's come down to is the city is now comfortable with the deal at sixty million. A plus, I, I do want to say, abating the ticket tax, which is a tax only the sports franchises pay. It's a five percent tax on tickets that only the Blues and the Cardinals used to pay, but neither the Blues nor Cardinals pay it anymore. It's kind of an outdated tax. So I, I want to make, make so, sure. So, so you're saying the five percent tax will be on an, an MLS ticket? It will be on, and well, it's going to be abated now. I, I think it will be on. Uh, yes, it'll be on the ticket, but and that money will, will go to help pay for the stadium. Gotcha. What okay. it, so the, let me give the kind of a summary of the deal. It's sixty million in bonds uh, from the city. Fifty million of that will be backed by what's known as a use tax, and most people haven't heard of a use tax because most people don't pay a use tax. It's a tax businesses pay on out of state purchases. It's like a, a business sales tax. So if you're not a business with out of state uh, taxes, you don't pay that. And then another t- uh, chunk of that will come actually from the revenues uh, generated by the stadium. So on the public side, if you're not either not a business, and most people aren't, that pays the use tax and most pe- businesses don't, your, none of your money goes for this. And if you don't go to the stadium, your money doesn't go for that. So the city wanted to put something together in response to the ownership group's uh, proposal, and it is less than what the ownership group had proposed uh, in the fall, uh, but it, it makes the city comfortable that the taxpayers' interests are going to be protected, and that when this goes to a vote of the people, they can decide, do you want to do this or not, and ha- not have to worry about whether or not it makes fiscal sense. Right. A uh, couple things here. I want to reiterate. All of this jockeying, all of this minutia, all of this conversation, ultimately, the people of the city of St. Louis will vote on whether or not they agree with this plan. Correct. And, and just to refresh everybody's memory, it, during the football stadium, there was not a vote of the people, and there was litigation over the legality of, of the requirement that there is a vote, and the courts ultimately ruled that the uh, ordinance was flawed and threw it out, and it has not been replaced. So technically, there is not a requirement that this go to a vote of the people, but both the ownership group and Mayor Slay both insisted for this to go forward, uh, that uh, there did need to be a vote of the people. So um, on in April... Uh, assuming the Board of Aldermen uh, moves it to the ballot, voters will be asked to uh, approve using this business tax uh, for uh, a big chunk of the city's part of the deal. The Board of Aldermen have to move on this pretty quickly to get it on that April ballot. 
Well, it, it, you know, this is where the law and lawyers get make things complicated. Technically, the deadline is 10 weeks before the election so that the election board has enough time to print the ballots. And that's coming up next week. However, the law also says that after the 10 week deadline, you can go into court and ask a judge to give you a, 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 an order and a ruling to put it on the ballot. And, the, and this law basically says the judge shall do that unless the election authority shows that it would have an undue burden. So there is a soft deadline 10 weeks out and then a hard deadline six weeks out. So next week is a soft deadline. It is not a drop dead deadline. Yeah, what? I get it. I get it. It gets complicated. That's why, that's why guys like me can make a living. <laughs> All right, now let's let, let's go back to to the state for a second because yeah. Governor Nixon was on with uh, Martin Kilcoin, I guess, uh, last week or week before, talking about the site and that the site of the stadium is owned by the state and that no matter who buys that land or who wants to develop that land, somebody has to get it ready for private business to take it over. You are on the right track. Again, I'm going to leave it to Governor Greitens to announce the details of what he's comfortable with, uh, you know, should he, when, if and when he does that. But you're on the right track. I think it's pretty clear from the governor's statement that the state is not going to put any money into the construction of the stadium. Uh, it, is, it is a matter of public record that the state does own the land. But again, I think uh, I'm going to leave it to Governor Greitens to announce what he's comfortable with. But that land is has to be reworked even if no, nothing happens with the stadium because of the mapping agency. Correct. It has to be. Uh, you want you want you want to fix the site up not only for the purposes of the stadium, but you want this stadium to be connected to the rest of downtown. You want it to be connected to the NGA uh, in North St. Louis. Uh, you know, so the, the, the ownership group, by the way, is also talking about putting in three to five million dollars to improve the streetscape and improve the streets around it. So you want this to be connected to the fiber of the city, not just, you know, drop a stadium in. So there, there are I'm not an expert on preparing a site for a stadium or how you get it into the grid of the city. But you are correct. Uh, there is an expense that goes along with that. All right. Now, let's talk about the vote of the people, because we've all lived through the football stadium ranker mm -hmm. plan the cardinal stadium ranker um any theory any initial thoughts on the city voters of st louis wanting to actually pass this what what's the sort of prevailing thought well my prevailing thought on this is that there are going to be a large chunk of people who no matter what the details are they're going to be against it they just don't like the, the this idea and then there's going to be a large chunk of soccer fans who probably don't care what the details are. They just want to go to soccer games. And then there's going to be a group of people in the middle who are like skeptical. But as long as it makes sense, are willing to support it. And that's the group we have to go get. Um, and that is people who are not soccer fans, but are but you know are open to the idea that you know we need to keep adding these sorts of amenities if we want to keep our kids and grandkids here. Uh, MLS is a is really uh, popular among younger uh, people, and that's the growing demographic. That's why MLS doesn't want to build stadiums out in the suburbs. You know, uh, no offense against the suburbs, they just want to be uh, in downtowns because they're, they're they believe their future fans uh, want them to be in downtowns for for all of the obvious reasons. So we got to go. Go after the folks in the middle who are like going to be skeptical. They're not hardcore soccer fans, but they are open to the idea that we, you know, we do want to create amenities that make our city more exciting. The kind of people who probably voted for the city arch river tax because they think that the art, the, the you know, we need to improve the arch grounds. Right. People who are supporting Forest Park, the kind of people who would support the zoo. So, I mean, we all know people who, who you know, are very, you know, really dead set against uh, proposals like this, and we all know uh, sports fans who don't even care about the details and therefore it's that group in the middle we got to win over yeah uh all right that's jeff rainford if the governor gets on board and the board of aldermen get on board and it's passed and everyone's it's a bow is tied and the mls says st louis you're the next uh group and full steam ahead when does the first shovel go into the ground, and when is it ready to go? Well, I'm not a construction expert, and they, they got to finish, uh, you know, the engineering plans and the architectural plans and all that. But I think you're talking about, you know, basically a three-year construction period. So I think we're talking about 2021 uh, for the, the team to come here. And just to kind of go over a little bit of the details, we love to talk about the financing. You're talking about a 20,000-seat uh, stadium um, uh, and it is on the western part of downtown near Union Station, and right. it'll be connected into the rest of downtown. And, you know, the we're describing it doesn't do justice. The, f the pictures itself, it's really exciting uh, the way it's not like 
some stadiums are dropped into a neighborhood and they, they, they look out of place. The way this has been uh, engineered and the way it's been designed, it will fit beautifully into the fabric of downtown. And, you know, truth be told, the western part of downtown could use a, a pick-me-up. Uh, that part of downtown could. And I think it will make Union Station stronger and it'll make the area around it stronger. Uh, but it is a beautiful uh, looking stadium and was very thoughtfully designed to fit into the fabric of downtown. Jeff Rainford, what's it like no, no longer being mayor of the city of St. Louis? Well, uh, I get to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you throwing your uh, considerable political weight behind any of the current candidates? Um, I am not. However, I think it's becoming clear based on everything that the two front runners are Alderwoman Lida Krusen and President of the, uh, of the Board of Alderman Lewis Reed. And they are both friends of mine, so that puts me in a little bit of a conflict position. But I think the city be well served by either one of them. Jeff Rainford, uh, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. 728.